texture 2D content size is actually giving us the width of the real image, not the width of the texture, the width of the image inside the texture. So we want width, image width and image height to be equal to those. The texture width and the texture height is now, val is now equal to how wide our texture is in pixels, which are these two um, properties here which I'm able to use. And then the maximum texture width, okay, is basically the width of our image, which we've already defined, divided by the texture width. Okay, now that means then that the texture width is, is in pixels. So if this was 128 pixels wide, it would be 128 divided by the width. And that means that's the maximum texture width of our image. Okay, so that gives us that calculation. We're then also calculating the ratio as well. Okay, so we're saying that if this is the width of our image and an image can only ever be one wide, between zero and one wide, the ratio, in other words, one pixel of our image is equal to X number of texels. And this is what is being held and calculated here. Um, at the moment, I'm setting the offset of our image to be zero. So it's gonna just be going from the bottom left-hand corner of our image. It's not gonna be going and using an offset. Uh, rotation is zero, so this thing isn't being rotated and then I'm setting the color filter and at the moment by setting everything as one that basically means that it's going to be using whatever colors are in the image and one for alpha means that there's no transparency um, but that's something that we can change later on. Okay <clears throat> now another little um, method that I'm, I'm implementing here which is really just for testing and something that is quite handy for testing um, is a description method. So what this is allowing me to do is if I actually, once I've instantiated uh, an image, I can then go and ask for its description. And that means I can get out some useful information about that particular image. So at the moment, what this will do, this will actually return a string uh, and that string is gonna give me the texture ID, um, which is the texture ID used inside OpenGL, which is defined inside texture 2D. Um, it's gonna give me the width, the height, the texture width, the texture height, the maximum texture width, and exactly examples and so on. So it's really everything. Everything that we've defined up here, we can actually output by just doing a call to description, um, which is quite useful. So we can, if there are funny things going on, we can have a look here and see if there's some funny values that, uh, that we actually need to be dealing with. Okay, so what we now need to do is um, have a look at actually how we, we render um, things to the screen. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit complicated maybe, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to talk you through and it will make some sense as to what I'm actually doing here inside my particular method class. So what we're going to have a look at is how we can actually, um, <clears throat> excuse me, render our image to the screen. Um, and I'm sort of abstracting this a little bit um, to make the class a little bit nicer to use, uh, a little bit, no repetition of code really as well. Um, <clears throat> so the first, the first thing I'm gonna look at is um, in, well, it's going to be in order, basically, of the things that we've defined in our in our header file. Um, so the first, uh, if we go back to our header file, actually, the uh, first action method that I've got down here is about getting a sub image. Okay, so being able to return a sub image um, of what we've actually got. So that's that's going to be the method that we'll implement next. Okay, so I'll put in this particular method and then we'll run through it. Okay, so here's our method <clears throat> with the method signature that uh, we defined inside of the header. So when you call this, we're returning a pointer to an image object and we are identifying a point. So in other words, the point is where from the, on the X and the Y axes within the image, do we want to start taking a sub image? Um, and we then provide a sub-image width and a sub-image height. I'm using um, unsigned integers here um, just because we always know that we're not going to be taking negative values or in my particular implementation, I don't want to be taking negative values. I always want to be taking positive values for the width and the height. Um, and also we want to be able to pass in a scale, which is a float uh, because it could be 0.5 or 1.5 or 2.7, whatever it may be. So once we've got those, <clears throat> what we do is we create a new instance of uh, the image class, okay? So we create this new um, image instance called subimage, and we allocate using that, okay? And what we do is we're saying we want to init with a texture. Now this is where 
um, the texture side of things is quite handy. The image that we're currently in has already been initialized and the texture property has been defined to point to the texture that we want, um, which is an instance of texture 2D. So what we can do here is we can actually create a new version of, or a new instance of image passing in a reference to the texture here, which has already been created, okay? Um, again, there's a risk here we need to remember, which is it means that this new sub-image object, which we're gonna be creating and passing out, is referencing the texture inside this image. So if we ever destroy this image, it will destroy this texture that goes along with it. And that would then mean that we are, um, we are destroying uh, the texture that this, this new image object is using as well. And so there could be problems. So you need to remember that when you're creating images from other images, um, you need to actually remove the images in reverse order. So you don't end up with a, um, a bad alloc. So you're trying to access memory that's already been freed up uh, because texture has been deallocated. Um, we then have scale here as well. Um, so this is where we are, if we want to, being able to pass in an image, uh, a scale, which we are doing. So we, we've got the ability to pass in a sub-image scale, which could be one for the same size or two if you want to double it up. Um, so we're passing that in. So it's just really a very simple, um, we're allocating a new version of image using the current texture of the image we're in and giving it a scale. Once we've done that, <clears throat> we're then defining the offset. So remember, we've got this ability to define an offset inside an image, um, which is where the image will be drawn from using then a width and a height whenever you ask that image to be drawn. So because we're, we've got our sub image, we're now going to set the texture offset for X and the texture offset for Y using the point values that have been passed in. So we can use the X and the Y point values passed in by getting our um, by the call to get sub image at point. So that's now set the X and the Y offset inside this new image object that we've got here. Um, <clears throat> we also can then set the image width and the image height, um, which we have here, image width and image height. And actually this has just reminded me why <laughs> earlier on I didn't have those two items as being um, read only. Okay, so we'll go and change that now so I, while I remember. So if we go back into image header, I uh, remember these weren't read only and I changed them to read only. The reason is, is that there are situations where I do want to change um, them externally, which is in this instance where I'm defining a new width and a new height for an image when I return a sub image. Okay, so we'll just change that, save and go back into our .m file. Okay, so we're setting the, the width and the height of the image in here. Uh, and we're then setting the scale of the image by using the setter for set scale. And lastly, we're setting the rotation of the image. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set the rotation of this new image to be the same as the rotation of the image from which it's being taken from. Um, we can change that later in the new image if you want to, but we're just sort of, we are respecting the rotation that's already been defined for this image and passing it back. And then lastly, we're just returning that. So we're actually handing that sub image um, object that we've created back to whoever's calling it. Uh, and we now have a new image with a new set of properties for that image, but pointing to the same texture as was in this image. So there's no new texture being created in texture memory. We're not using up any more memory in that respect. We are just referencing the texture that's inside this image. But we can now do different things with that image. We can have different rotations, different sizes, different locations, different color filters, uh, without affecting the image from which the copy was taken. Okay, so that's quite useful to be able to do. Okay, so that's that's being able to get a sub-image um, from our image class. We now need to be